What's up, guys? Steven here, one, two, and two, and it's list day. Ah, yes, list day. And today we're looking at the top 10 best normal rares in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duels. So the last couple videos we looked at were some of the worst ultras and super rare cards in the game that you wouldn't really want to be spending your ultra rare and super rare points on. So there was a few comments that were like, what about the opposite? The best low rarity cards. This is, this is that, that video. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 10, Tri Brigade Nerval. Level 1 Wing Beast Monster with 0 attack and 2k defense. This thing got big booty. Like all the other Tri Brigades, you can banish Beast, Beast Warrior, and Wing Beast Monsters from your graveyard up to a link rating of a Beast, Beast Warrior, or Wing Beast Link Monster in your extra deck and uh, force a special summon of said Link Monster. You banish 2, you summon a Link 2. You banish 3, you summon a Link 3. That's just how the Tri Brigade do. But it does have a specific ability. If this card is sent to the graveyard, it fails to say where from. Keep that in mind. You can add one Tri-Brigade monster from your deck to your hand. Except himself. I don't, actually, I don't know why you'd want to add himself. That wouldn't be very good. But you can't, so I guess there's that. <laughs> you add Karas. Because Karas can special summon himself, uh, and then also has the summony thing from Extra Deck by Banishy Guy in Graveyard. And if you do the whole play line of tri brigades, you probably got a bunch of crap in your graveyard because the way they play is you gotta discard the dude who dumps the dude who searches the other dude. <laughs> I'm a dude playing the dude disguises another dude. <laughs> Overall, this is just a, a really, really good value for your your normal points. Number nine, Nemesis Corridor. This is an interesting entry on the list because I had a typo in my script and, and said a bunch of dumb stuff, so I had to re-record it like weeks later. <laughs> Truly the pinnacle of professionalism. But what does this level four wind thunder monster actually do? You can target one of your banished monsters, special summon this card and return the targeted monster to your deck. While it's on the field, you can target one of your banished monsters and add that target to your hand. This thing allows you to recur your banished monster resources and, more importantly, uh, satisfies Thunder Dragon Colossus's summoning condition and therefore becomes its own material for that card. Practically tailor-made to play nice with the Thunder Dragons. But it doesn't have to be Thunder Dragons as long as your deck has a, an ability to banish your monsters, you can just stick this thing in and then get a free Thunder Dragon Colossus somewhere in the middle of your combo in order to make your end board just that much more of a mistake. My typo had this as a level 10. I went on to a, a big spiel about like trains or some shit. <laughs> Number eight, Banquet of Millions. If you are exactly Doug Zeef, Stop watching the video now. <laughs> this normal trap card says, banish any number of cards from your extra deck face down and banish the same number of random cards from your opponent's extra deck face up until the end of the turn. You can only activate one of these banquet a million things once per turn. Okay, so why is this shit good? Used as intended, banishing a bunch of, like, let's say like, I don't know, 12 guys from your extra deck that you, your deck doesn't actually need to summon because you're an entire main deck deck, like, I don't know, Monarchs or UAs or uh, Eldritch or whatever, and you're playing against a combo deck, you could be like, say goodbye to your play lines. Hitting like a majority of your opponent's extra deck and against a combo deck is pretty much gonna say they, they can't play Yu-Gi-Oh for this entire turn. How that actually gets used in Master Duels? Well, that isn't super true anymore because they, they limit it, but uh, uh, there's there's cheesy burn combos you can do with, uh, oh crap, DD Dynamite. You can basically put two decks worth of cards in the banished pile and then hit for some cheesy burn damage or some garbage. So that is, both of those functions are quite good. So this is very good for your normal points. Number seven is Danger Mothman. Level four, Dark Insect Monster. 1800 attack, 400 defense. Just like all the other danger monsters, it has the effect where you can reveal it in your hand, 
Then your opponent chooses one card randomly from your hand and then discards that to the graveyard. If the discarded card was not Danger Mothman, you can then special summon it and then draw a card to replace the thing you lost. And then, like every other Danger Monster, it has a specific effect if it is the thing that got discarded. If this card is discarded, not necessarily by its own effect, but that's normally how it's getting done, both players draw a card and then discard a card. So it's a monster that can either special summon itself or force a dark world dealings. That's good. A level four dark is also just pretty advantageous typing. You can kind of play this in stuff specifically, probably in, in, in dark worlds, right? That is not cost to discard, it is by effect after all. But just as a free body that puts itself on board that also draws you stuff like any of the other danger monsters is also just plain good in a lot of strategies. All the dangers could have easily been high rarity in order to prevent players from just, you know, running a huge danger package in the game, but, uh, not. Uh, most of them are actually pretty reasonable. The best ones are high rarity, but they all kind of function in the same way, so you really don't need to break the bank if you just want to put a few of them in your deck. Number six, Sphere Karibo. This little smooth boy, smooth boy, eh? I'm gonna edit that out. Nice one, Dave! Level 1 Dark Fiend Monster with 300 attack, 200 defense. It's a Karibo. Coming in hot from Duel Links. When your opponent declares an attack, you can send this card from your hand to the graveyard to change the attacking monster into defense mode. Yeah, it's just a cute battle protection. It's not great because, you know, it is one of those good in Duel Links cards. And because we don't have a main phase two, the battle phase is a lot more impactful. So something that just simply ends the battle phase or potentially just ends the battle phase is actually a much stronger effect because then it just bumps you to the end phase. However, um, for it being essentially free in the game, that's a pretty solid card, especially if we're doing something like the, the, the NR format or something like that, where, you know, you just need to put in some interesting hand traps to take up the fact that you can't run Ash Blossoms no more, and so Severe Grebo is really not so bad. It also has a weird uh, ritual effect. I don't know why. If you ritual summon, you can banish this from your graveyard as one of the ritual materials. Uh, there's also Relink Karibo, and so I, I, there's apparently some ritual Karibo deck they want you to play that is presumably relinquished, but those two have nothing to do with each other, except for the fact that Yugi blew up Thousand Eyes Restrict with them. They were on opposing sides of that game, though. Number five, Paleozoic Canada. Oh, Canada. Keep your stick on the ice. Normal trap card, one of my favorite archetypes, the Paleos. Not one of my favorite diets, though. Target one face-up monster your opponent controls, put it face down defense position. It's just a, it's a, it's a one-sided book of moon on a trap card. Okay. But it does have the paleo effect. This is once per chain. When a trap card is activated, while this card is in the graveyard, you can special summon this thing as a normal level two water aqua monster with 1200 attack and zero defense. It is no longer treated as a trap card, unlike other trap monsters. And it's also not affected by monster effects, which everyone forgets about. <laughs> so many people try to pop this with a monster effect, and then it's like waiting, waiting. Like they can't figure out why it didn't kill the normal monster. <laughs> it's like, come on, you know what this does. But you banish it when it leaves the field. Okay, so um, Paleos are good because not only are they all based on rather effective spell and trap cards, they can summon themselves back from the graveyard in order to go into like the rank two package, which includes Totally Awesome, one a card that this can be part of, as well as uh, Opabina, which allows you to use Paleo trap cards from your hand as if they were spells, making a pretty versatile and decent rogue strategy for a very long time. That's not just me uh, talking up my paleo frogs, these card, this set of cards is actually, they're actually pretty good. And it could be worse, this thing was like an ultra in Duel Links, so boo, right? Number four, Bottomless Trap Hole. Oh nice, it's Bottomless Trap Hole. Man, I mean, I hated this card when I was a kid. When your opponent summons a monster with 1500 more attack power, destroy it and then banish it. It does monster or monsters, so if your opponent pendulum summons, you can bottomless it. Big funny. But this thing is just very strangely worded. I, I'm not convinced it doesn't say destroy it and then banish it because back in the day, when we had cards being first removed from play, they were only removed from play from the graveyard first. Perhaps, maybe, when they designed the card, they were like, well, you can't really banish a card from the field, right? It's gotta be in the graveyard first. So this thing is like, 
temporarily destroying the card like in the middle of a resolution so then it is allowed to then banish i i'm convinced that's the reason that was the reason why they did that uh it leads to some problems because this does destroy so uh cards that can't be destroyed by card effects are immune to to a card that should ultimately just be banishing them but that doesn't change the fact for a normal point thing uh, a bottomless trap hole is a really solid cheap option if you just need to put some trap cards in your deck and you're just starting out this is actually very good value all right number three is enemy controller man half these cards are good in duel links that's got to be a big wake-up call for the duel links players and they realize like all their favorite good cards are just normals <laughs> they're like oh oh no Enemy Controller, though, is actually a pretty slick card. It's it's one of my favorite spell cards, just because uh, it's so weirdly versatile. It's like Book of Moon and Called by the Grey. It's also why, partially, we named my second channel Enemy Controller. Go check that out if you guys want to watch me uh, play some, some Pokemans or stuff. I basically use it as a Let's Play channel. I haven't posted there in a little while uh, because I'm restructuring it to do my couch couch streams. I just need to set up a computer upstairs so we can use my awesome classic video game setup that you can clearly see now. I'm using this as an excuse to brag about that. We, <laughs> Amanda and I put in some work on this. It's also a game controller. That, that was also the other part of that logic. <laughs> it made sense. Quick play spell card. Activate one of these effects. Target a monster your opponent controls, change the defense position. It's just uh, discount Book of Moon. Uh, doesn't put a face down, just in just in defense position. Protect yourself from, uh, from you know, uh, uh, def uh, some battle damage. You know, there's some cute stuff you can do with this. Or you can tribute one monster, target one monster your opponent controls, and take control of it until the end of the turn. Ah, see, that effect is a little bit better. <laughs> sure, it uh, isn't just a free steal like Change of Hearts or Snatch Steal, but it is quick play. That actually might make the card arguably better than those other ones that are just free but are a little slow. So, you know, that quick play makes it quite versatile. I like me some enemy controller. All right, in before, change my channel to Geonator. <laughs> Geonator transfers or Geonator 1212. <laughs> it's my channel about my love of rocks. Talking about quartz, basalt, limestone. <laughs> Rock Earth Monster, 1200 attack, uh, level. Oh, it's a Link, too. This is a Link monster. I, I have no idea what this is. <laughs> Made of two effect monsters. Ooh, that's pretty generic. This linked card and cards that it points to cannot be destroyed by your opponent's card effects. Ooh, that's neat. I kind of like this idea where if you go uh, even further beyond with your link spam plays and you like connect a bunch of dudes, you get a bunch of strung together effects. I think that's kind of neat. It gives you some reward for, you know, the Tetris board you're building. And being able to bestow some destruction protection on the crap it points to is kinda neat. It also has an effect that if this points to two monsters, you can change control of those monsters. I don't know why you would want to do that. I suppose you could go into something stupid like an acid golem or uh, some other monster with a detrimental effect and then just scoot it over to your opponent's board. You could probably use this in a Oh, you could use this in a stupid Jackpot 7 deck, couldn't you? Oh no. Ooh, deck profile incoming. Oh man, I keep doing these videos and keep finding this stupid shit I want to play on my stream. I want to play this. This is so jank. You can only use this effect of this thing once per turn. I mean, sure. This is neat. Uh, it, it's probably got some degenerate applications as I've just discovered in my own head, but uh, it doesn't change the fact that it's a pretty neat little link to all right, honorable mention is number 70, Malevolent Sin. Again, coming in hot from Duel Links, just being a normal. But hey, this rank four dark insect, this thing's an insect? Oh yeah, I guess it is a big spider, right? Spiders aren't insects. That's bad entomology. XYZ monster, 2400 attack, uh, 1200 defense, what do? Once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to banish until the end of the turn one monster your opponent controls. It's only until the end phase that's not the best removal in the game, but for a long time, this was the best removal in Duel Links. <laughs> and at the end of the damage step, if this thing attacks, it gets a permanent 300 attack boost. So if you can OTK, this is still a pretty solid little option to stick in your extra deck, because you know what? The extra deck in, Ma in Master Duels is kind of expensive. So having a decently, you know, perfectly serviceable rank four option as a normal is actually, you know, that's, that's really not bad. That is a kindness, I would say. Parallel Exceed, level eights, 
Level eight. Is it a level eight? Huh, it is. It's almost like I've never played the card. I've only ever seen it summoned. <laughs> In which case, it's not level eight. If this card is special summoned by the effect of Peril Exceed, it becomes level four. Which is a, a very peculiar effect now that now that you think about it, right? You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. If you Link Summon, you can special summon this card from your hand to a zone that Link Monster points to. Or, if this card is normal or special summon, you can special summon one Parallel Exceed from your deck. Okay, so I think it's called Parallel Exceed because when you summon one, it summons another copy of itself. They're both level four, so you can Exceed Summon. It doesn't say you can't, like, just keep Link Summoning, though. Hmm, that's really free. This is a normal. That's not just a good normal card, that's just a good card. <laughs> so, you know what, that's uh, it's a good deal. You gotta start playing some other decks, Dave. Jeez. Yeah, but I just wanna play Kraken Control. I don't wanna play Combo. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be coming up on the, uh, the next best set of the game. And then after that, we'll probably be doing the best rares in Master Duels. Cause you know, you know what? Uh, we might as well just do the whole damn thing, right? And remember guys, if you don't troll a meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Oh cool, I gotta pee. <laughs>